Let's jump right into waiver wired, starting with the notable wide receivers on the bye for week nine. And this is a pretty good group here with Denver, Cortland Sutton, Jerry, Judy, Detroit, Ride or Die, Ride or Die, uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jacksonville, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, San Francisco. We know Debo Samuel's hurt, but Brandon Ayuk, a big one as well. Yeah, Jerry, Judy, always on a bye. Yeah, hey, no difference this a week. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, but the, 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 the Ayuk and the Amon Ra, they, uh, those are bigger names. Uh. Those are bigger names. All right. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Reminder, the trade. Well, four the minutes trade, in, and I'm already sick of this. Yeah, Jay, <laughs> oh. Jay prefaced on the production call today that he will be very tired of this by about the four to six minute mark. Uh, of the, the under hit. The under, <laughs> the under <laughs> smashed. Yeah. The under yeah. at uh, yeah. minus 200. Absolutely. Yeah. Taking yeah. home some prizes. So, yeah. the trade That's deadline. That's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Understand. <laughs> the trade you deadline. You get sick of this. Is a feature, not a bug. 4 p.m. Eastern today. So, keep an eye on everything from the trade deadline, and we will jump into that because, of course, we will be back tomorrow mm. at noon. Eastern, but let's start with the waiver wire ad of the week at wide receiver, and that is Commanders wide receiver Jahan Dotson. Now, a caveat here only available in 49% of leagues. Our standard is typically Luigi 50%, mm. but Jahan Dotson could be out there in your league. He's coming off a week eight against Philly, where he caught eight passes for over 100 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, a lot of time he is saying, hey, eh, somehow a look at me, a look at me, and he's getting a lot of that, right? 18 targets of the past two games. 10 last week. Oh, he's a good, talented guy, Mr. Jahan Dotson. And what's this exciting to a me, to a Luigi? 70% of his receptions over the last two games have come in the slot. In the slot. You understand? And so when you think about this a matchup with the Patriots, oh, the New England, the Patriots, and the middle of Belichick. Is Luigi right. or a character on the wire? I don't know. <laughs> Just to go with it. Anyway, over the last four weeks, the Patriots uh, have ranked bottom 10 in terms of most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. <laughs> So, well, well, Luigi made yeah. Stringer Bell talking ah, about. Uh, I'm going to kill you. Uh, how about that? Uh, how about uh, this? Anyway, uh, yeah, give me some of Jahan Dotson. Yeah, all right. Sure. I, I mean, think you, he'll uh, have a success uh, against uh, Bill Bella Checker. Okay. Good things for Jahan Dotson going forward, right, Jay? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess. I guess yeah, so. We could, we could, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, and interested in your thoughts, Connor, about Sam Howe's performance against the Eagles because I thought he was uh, phenomenal until the last couple of throws that he really butchered on the third and fourth down. But the big thing was he didn't take any sacks. Yes. And if he's not going to take any sacks, then all of a sudden this offense looks completely different. He played faster. And, and that's all you could ask for from a young quarterback, right? When you look at Sam Howell, you just want him to get the ball out quicker, utilize targets that they've invested a lot of resources in, like Jahan Dotson. And the Eagles' corners have been vulnerable this, uh, this year, so it's good to see him take advantage of that. And Sam Howell has played up to the competition against Philly twice now, which says a lot about his character as well. Let's also just see who's on this Washington team, your commanders, uh, in five hours, because they've just traded Montez Sweat to the Bears. Uh, a great deal for a guy who's leaving anyway. I'm not sure why the Bears are giving up a second round pick it's, for a guy who's leaving. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, it could be pick 33. Yeah, that's a very exciting. I, I love the deal. <laughs> Washington should be a, in sell mode. You understand? Yeah, I do understand. Yeah. 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 yeah just, uh, here, what do you, what do you <laughs> want? Uh, you know what this reminds it. me of? So, mm. I don't, have you ever seen the movie The Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino? Because the first half of the many, movie, Keanu, many years ago. Keanu does a southern accent for the first half, and it's terrible. <laughs> and then the second half, he just <laughs> bails, yeah. and he's like, no, nah, I can't do it. I'm just Keanu now. The yeah. second half of the movie, I'm Keanu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh, may, that may have happened today. <laughs> that may have happened today. Okay. Yeah. We'll see how far we go. So far, yeah. we're all the way through. We're going to get through the second one. It's harder to do the analysis in the, in the voice. You yeah, you got through one player. Let's see how yeah. the second one goes. Jay here. Go to Jay. Patriots wide receiver, Demario Douglas. Pop Douglas. To that, to that uh, a-hole, yeah. John Todd is healed. <laughs> 97% available. Deal. He's got the commander secondary this week, and the reason Pop Douglas shows up on this because Kendrick Bourne most likely out for the season with the torn ACL. Seems like he's done, and Pop Douglas is getting a little bit more work in any case. I mean, he had seven targets against the Dolphins. Uh, he's trending up in that offense. They're just looking for any kind of burst that they can get. And Mac Jones has, I mean, he hasn't been fantastic, but he has been more usable the past two weeks. So I just think any wide receiver one in an NFL offense has to be rostered, and it looks like that's what Demario Douglas is now, Luigi. Kendrick Bourne has been, uh, has been a good the last couple of weeks. And now, as you mentioned, he had... He is not going to play this week. He gone for the year, unfortunately. Sad, Luigi. But uh, Devontae Parker, also in the concussion protocol, as you have mentioned. So, yes, Demario Douglas, the number one wide receiver, 25% a target share last week. 
and you think about my commanders, who had just gave up Montez Sweat, and honestly just give up a lot of things, including yards to opposing wide receivers, right? Uh, the second most for a game. So, uh, so yeah, I like a Demario Douglas this a week and a go in future because uh, Patriots in a, you know, uh, let's see what we got to mode. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know it's in and out. Does this. It's an in and out. It's hard to talk for a long time, but you understand that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll help you out then. The next one here, okay. Brandon Cooks. He's got the Eagles secondary that we just talked about. He's available in almost 60% mm. of the leagues. Yeah. Uh, last week against the Rams, three catches, 49 yards. Most importantly, that touchdown. But you have to like the matchups ahead. The Eagles, the Giants at Carolina, and then they have the Commanders on Thanksgiving here, Luigi. So Brandon Cooks. Somebody that, once again, he is available in almost 60% of leagues, and you know he's going to be involved in this Dallas passing attack. You know what Luigi likes to do? He likes to a cook. And so you got to Brandon Cooks, and it makes – I can't do it anymore. All right. <laughs> I'm going to bail on this. All right. And so, anyway. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Thanks. I'm going to go. America minutes, thanks you. Nine minutes yes. and 30 seconds. I – Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go full Keanu, and so I'm just going to go in and out of it. That's, that's the right that's strategy. What do. So I'm going to go in and out of it with no rhyme or reason throughout yeah. the entire well, show. Denzel Denzel was a phenomenal 5 out of 10 movie <laughs> in 1997. Isn't uh, – and is Al Pacino in that? Yeah, Al Pacino it, plays the devil. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Another amazing I remember, yeah, I remember hating that so movie. started just yelling at I everything. saw it when it was in the theaters. I remember hating Charlie's it. Charlie's the wrong. All right, uh, she was great in it. Um, uh, okay. What, it depends, what, it depends when you're a young man and what you're looking for in out of a movie. I'll just say that. All right, here with Brandon Cooks. Uh, the positives here, he scored in two of the last three games. He leads all wide receiver in yards per target. And it does feel like this Cowboys offense is getting back on track. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, again, we got to unleash the running game here. But Dak, you know, and you know I'm not the biggest Dak fan in the world, but Dak legitimately have look, has looked really good the last couple of weeks. Feels like the passing offense is finally coming on. And the success of CeeDee Lamb opens up everything for all these guys. So, again, he's third on the list. He's available. But you like his chances against the Eagles, Giants, Panthers, Washington. Those are the next four for the Cowboys. It's a really nice stretch for the passing game of the Cowboys, of which Brandon Cooks is a part of. Yep. And Connor, while you were out yesterday um, losing Emmys, uh, we know we talked Emmy. about Emmy. I lost once. <laughs> okay, just one. <laughs> There's more to come. But you weren't nominated for the other awards, <laughs> yes. in fairness. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I mean, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I just lost just once. The, right. You, yeah. you know, I mean, in I'm theory, a loser, like, but only one time. <laughs> Yes. In many ways. I mean, like, there are many awards in which you did not win. And yeah. what's a person who did I not win I can't be nominated for play-by-play. Play. Yeah. I understand, or but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. To, to be fair, it's not like Connor lost, like, best supporting actor to Heath Ledger. Yeah. The Oscar right, is right. the Joker. Yeah, right. he didn't lose that no, necessarily. No, no, he just he lost to Todd Eppenzeal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be phenomenal if Todd watches the show. Yeah, just Sitting exactly. back, just one peacock. Yeah. Like, what the hell is going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. When, How did I get roped into this? When Todd goes into the – when Todd Zeal goes into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame – I mean, because he only played, I think, three years with the Mets. He played like five or six with the Cardinals. Right. He, there was a Phillies year in there. It was a Yankees year he in there. He was long a long career. Long career. Yes. Who does he go in as? You know, we go into the, and when he goes into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, all the Emmys that he's won over oh, you. With the, Met, uh, with Mets the, and SMY. Yeah, the Mets, yeah, okay. Mets affiliate. Uh, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, I like it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Interesting. what I was starting to say was that talking about Dak Prescott being a kind of sneaky mm -hmm. MVP candidate in yeah. a weird way, just because that team is now trending up. They have, if they beat the Eagles as three-point dogs all of a sudden, they're right there for the one seed in the NFC. Dak cleaned up his stats. And another reason I like this bet on Dak, who's 50-1 to 1 to an MVP, and another reason I like Brandon Cooks, is that the Cowboys can't run the ball. I don't understand it, but yeah. they cannot run the ball. Tony Pollard cannot get anything going on the ground. So they're having to throw the ball. Um, they need multiple receivers. And I don't understand what's happened to Michael Gallup, where he gets 10 targets one week, and he's just not a part of the offense the next. But Brandon Cooks seems like he's in position to take advantage. Yeah, the Dallas offensive line, to answer your question, Jay, just – it's not been good in yeah. run-blocking situations. There's just no way around it. But obviously the beneficiaries of that can be guys in their pass game. Yeah. So, All right, the next one here, and this one, you know, makes me happy. Saints wide receiver Rashid Shahid versus the Bears, 64% available. Jay texted me before the game loving Shahid's prop, and he smashed that. Three catches, 153 yards, and a touchdown. He's the big play threat of the Saints offense, Luigi. Yeah, and what you're hoping for, hey, if, you, if you say my, my name is Luigi. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, pick my spot. Let's, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, take a shot down to the field. Uh, hey, uh, Derek Carr, nice job. Uh, hey, I just, the three of targets is the concern, right? The, what you're hoping for here is a little, uh, a little rational coaching, right? Hey, uh, this guy is a good. Why don't you play him a little bit tomorrow, you know? And that's uh, not to what uh, happened in so far. 
but you're hoping, you know, he leads uh, leads all the wide receivers in uh, yards, uh, you know, the yards of per target, right? And two of the last three games, he's uh, gotten uh, one of them uh, touchdowns. He's a, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, Rashid Shaheed is, uh, is a guy that, uh, you know, you're hoping for the big play. Were people coming at you on Twitter last week because Shahid had a bad like guy? Two weeks those? ago. The worst yeah. part is they came at Matthew. <laughs> yeah. a, a, it wasn't his sleeper. And they were yelling at him. Yeah. Uh, I will take the fall, but I won't because you should hold on to Shahid because he can have a big week like this. What I'm hoping for is that, you know, there's always this, you know, so they're yelling at me because Shahid didn't come through and that was your sleeper. I'm hoping that people yell at you for my costume and voice today. That's what I'm hoping. It'll probably happen. Yeah, yeah, there's you and Jay. You guys should have stopped it. You yeah. had a chance and you didn't. Rashid Shahid well, looks like the best wide receiver on the Saints right now. I don't know what's did. happened to Chris Olave, it's what's going brutal. on there, but Shahid, he, he's the guy who gives that team right. uh, depth. The, the concern, like, you're, again, like, sort of, jo- as, as voice aside, like, again, you're hoping for rational coaching here because you're like, this guy is clearly talented. Get him more snaps. It's super weird that last week was his season low in snap rate and routes run. And so I know he plays special teams. And so, again, we've talked about this. I don't know why he's not getting more run. Is it maybe there's a concern on, like, he doesn't have a, a expanded route tree and maybe they don't right. really feel comfortable with him doing a certain package of plays. But so, you know, I think there's going to be some inconsistency there. But, again, if this were just pure talent, he'd be higher on this list. But we feel better about the workload and volume that Dotson, Douglas, and then actually Cooks would get over Shahid. But talent-wise, like, again, he's a guy that only needs one play to make your week. Our next one here, Chargers wide receiver Quinton Johnston. He's got the Jets, who their corners could have taken a nap against the Giants. So we'll see how much the Chargers challenge them compared to are Tommy you, DeVito. Are you buying this with Quinton Johnston? Because I know it's one of the things no. we've talked about. This is a guy that was inconsistent and unpolished. But, you know, with Josh Palmer getting a little bit banged up, he suddenly – he had his – again, this is a bit of damning with faint praise, but he had his best game of the season right. for the Chargers. Again, Palmer leaves that game for a little bit. No Gerald Everett in that game. They're playing the Bears – so, um, but this is a guy that was a high draft pick for the Chargers that passing off and seems like it's getting on track. So where are you on Quentin Johnson? Pretty mixed and not still overly optimistic because everything went right for him to get opportunity and he had a five for 50 day, which is, you might need that in your flex right now. But the reality is the Jets corners is a tough matchup. The reason you buy is because it's, ju- it's a Justin Herbert led offense and right. he could be the number two. Like you're always going to buy into that. But if I think Quentin Johnson's going to be this breakout, like we've seen with a lot of young players this year, I'm, I'm still not buying. Like I wouldn't go out crazy with my fab budget in this situation. Yeah, I, I think probably more deeper leagues. I wanted to mention him because I've just seen him mentioned a lot in a lot of waiver wire uh, columns and, and, and shows and that kind of stuff. And just, I mean, again, to your point about the upcoming schedule. So you've got the Jets this week, then home to Detroit. Lions are pretty good defense at Green Bay. That's always a tough place to play, especially that'll be in November. And then home to Baltimore it's and the Raven, right? So that's like there's not one matchup there that you feel great about, especially for a guy that is at best, at like the best case scenario is he's the third option on offense after Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. And that's assuming Palmer is hurt again and no Gerald Everett. Right, and there's a scenario where he's the fifth or sixth guy on off- offense. Yep, I agree. And another guy who. Is probably at best the third best option on his own offense, but it may not matter as much as Khalil Shakir of the Bills, uh, who really broke out in a big way uh, in that Thursday night game against the Bucks. But I think with the amount that the Bills throw the ball, the fact that they seem to make a conscious decision to switch to more 11 personnel, uh, and the fact that Diggs garners so much attention and there is opportunity for others in that offense, I think that Shakir is a guy who could be uh, viable the rest of the way as a flyer. Uh, we'll see what happens with Gabe Davis. His role seemed to change as well. Dalton Kincaid uh, obviously garners targets as well. But the thing, the reason I like Shakir is that the Bills' upcoming schedule, like they have to play the rest of the season. They have these games on the slate. At Cincinnati, at Philadelphia, at Kansas City, Dallas, at the Chargers, at Miami. These games are going to be shootouts, and they're going to need to be throwing the ball, and I think Shakir can benefit Connor. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong at all, and I think you like the – this might sound crazy, but you like the PPR floor of Shakir in that offense because when they do – run out a slot there uh, th- historically with Josh Allen they target the slot so I think when you look at Shakir there is a nice floor there it's a matter of what the ceiling can be and, and you know Connor this is something that you referenced and we've talked about this uh, over the last couple of weeks but the Bills have whether it's because of the injury to Dawson Knox whether it's because they're trying to get this offense a going they um they've been playing 11 personnel a lot more oh, yeah. 70 percent 
of plays in three straight games. They've been in 11 personnel. And so obviously that benefits Kincaid and Shakur. Uh, Shakir, so uh, obviously along with Gabe Davis, which is why I think Gabe Davis might not be a total fluke from last week I'm as well. You. Yeah, they're going to be a again if they're in, if they're team. in eleven personnel and they're playing you know high tempo offense, good things are going to happen when you've got Josh Allen at quarterback. Speaking of the Bills, we'll get to Uncle Lenny in a little bit. Our last one here: Packers wide receiver Jaden Reed against the Rams this week. He's got uh, he's available in eighty three percent of leagues. Week eight against the Vikings, six targets, four catches, 83 yards here for Jaden Reed, Jay, who seems to be around in most leagues right now and, and has had a rapport with Jordan Love at times this year. He has, and we spoke on Fantasy Football pregame on Sunday about how potentially the jury was out on Jordan Love. I think the jury is very in now. He is not being good at all. We haven't seen anything from him this season really outside of the first couple of weeks. And so I think that this is a team that's kind of in a rebuilding mode at the moment. And I think that Jaden Reed, he is a guy who's going to get more run going forward. Christian Watson just hasn't happened for him this season. I don't really understand it. Romeo Dobbs hasn't been the guy that he was in that stretch when Watson was out. So I think there is opportunity on this team. Also, I don't think they're very good. So I think they're going to be throwing a lot. And Jaden Reed's the guy who's shown the most promise. Question for you. Yeah, I agree. And by the way, double did, it's very quietly double digit fantasy points in three of the last four. So, I mean, again, I don't think you really want to invest in the Packers offense at all. No. But again, if you're this far down the list and you need a guy... He, uh, he certainly qualifies. They're home to the Rams this week and then at Pittsburgh. So it's not a schedule that, that really it makes you that nervous. Then home to, home to the Chargers as well. So three straight games against pass defenses that have struggled recently. So it's a nice schedule there for Jaden Reed. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.